The Cincinnati Bengals had a great passing game last season, but through the first four weeks of 2022, they've been a lot less efficient. The main reason for Cincinnati's offensive regression has been the offensive line. I was expecting way more from Lyle Collins and Jonah Williams has not been impressive to me. And so that's something that has to improve for the Bengals passing game to approach its potential and for Joe Burrow to have a long and successful career. But Cincinnati has also been struggling with the adjustments opposing defensive coordinators have made since last season. So in this video, we're going to answer two questions. What are defenses doing to slow down Cincinnati's passing game and what adjustments and improvements do they need to make going forward? So there's a good chance that over the last few weeks, you've heard someone discuss the Bengals inability to pass the ball against cover two. This is the prevailing narrative as to why Cincinnati's offense isn't meeting expectations. And this is true to an extent, but the reality is more nuanced. So cover two is a two deep zone coverage. You've got two safeties playing the deep half and five underneath defenders. And it specifically takes away the parts of the field that Cincinnati likes to attack. So this is Joe Burrow's passing heat map from last season. It's pretty much go routes down the sideline to Jamar Chase and quick game underneath with concepts like stick and Omaha. And this scheme combined with Joe Burrow's incredible deep accuracy and receivers that consistently beat single coverage can result in an explosive passing game if the opposing team is giving you the right looks. Against a single high defense like cover three, there's only one deep safety who usually isn't fast enough to cover both sidelines. So if Jamar Chase or T Higgins win their release, which usually happens, they can get a ton of easy chunk plays down the sideline. Such a huge portion of Cincinnati's offensive production last season came from teams inexplicably playing single high and Joe Burrow making them pay. But cover two splits the deep safety's responsibilities in half, and depending on how far they cheat over, the defense can completely erase vertical routes to the outside. And you also have five players underneath instead of four, so every passing window is a little bit smaller, and there's a flat defender sitting on the speed outs that Cincinnati likes to run. So cover two almost seems like it was designed specifically to stop the Bengals passing game, but there's a lot of proven ways to beat cover two. The Bengals just haven't done a good job of executing them to start out the season. One weakness of cover two is the intermediate to deep middle behind the linebackers and underneath the safeties. And dagger is Zach Taylor's favorite concept to attack this. Dagger consists of a vertical with a dig route underneath. The vertical route is sometimes called an influence post, and it's basically just meant to occupy the deep defender and create space for the dig. Since teams are playing cover two against the Bengals specifically to shut down these go routes to the outside, they're having their safeties get so much depth and width that anything over the middle is wide open. The problem is that Joe Burrow has never been that comfortable throwing over the middle of the field, so the execution on these plays isn't as automatic as you'd expect given how good of a quarterback Joe Burrow is. Combine that with his understandable lack of trust in the offensive line, and you get plays like this where the deep middle is wide open, but when Joe Burrow feels pressure, he bails from what ends up being a clean pocket. Right here, the Bengals are running dagger, this time against inverted cover two. And again, this seam route splitting the two safeties is wide open, but Joe Burrow gets pressured and doesn't see it. But against Miami, Joe Burrow went five for five for 69 yards against cover two. And it's not because Zach Taylor did anything special. They were just finally able to block for long enough to execute these concepts. So right here, again, it's dagger versus cover two. The Mike carries the number three vertical and T Higgins is wide open over the middle void. I think T Higgins should be the primary focal point of the Bengals offense as they adjust to seeing more quarters and cover two because in the same way that Jamar is sort of the ideal single high beater, Higgins' skill set is great against split safety coverages. He's really effective running these deep outs and corners against cover four. I think people underrate T Higgins' route running because he's 6'4", 220, and they assume he's just a jump ball receiver, but he separates so quickly and does a really good job selling his routes. Another thing I mentioned with cover two is how the passing windows are more condensed since there's five underneath defenders instead of four. So the Bengals need to take advantage of having a big framed receiver like T Higgins who can absorb contact and still make the catch. Last year, T Higgins had 18 contested catches, which ranked fourth among NFL receivers. So if I was Zach Taylor, that's something I would lean into. The other weakness of cover two is that there's fewer defenders in the box, so it's more difficult to stop the run. But the problem, and this goes back to the offensive line, is that the Bengals have been terrible running against light boxes this year. Through week four, Cincinnati has 44 rushing attempts with less than seven in the box, and they rank 31st in success rate and 28th in yards per carry. 
Defenses are selling out to limit explosive passes and the Bengals have been unable to punish them by running the ball effectively. Ultimately, I think the Bengals will be fine because their offensive weapons are still elite and the O-line has to be due for some positive regression. Thank you.